Welcome you live and in living color to Happily Married Mondays with the Jollies. I'm Dr. Willie Jolly, and this is... I'm D. Taylor Jolly. Welcome. We are the Jollies, and we are the authors of the books, of the book... Make love, make money, make it last. Make love, make money, make it last. Ten secrets to shape a good marriage, a great marriage, in fact. And that's what we're talking about. And that's what we're talking about today. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Join on. Uh, everybody knows to do the same thing every week. We want you to do the same thing. Start a watch party. Start a watch party. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Put out all the feelers and the, and the smiley faces. We want Lottie Dottie and everybody around the world to know it is jolly time. It is jolly time, and you're with Willie and D. Jolly all over. Hey there, let's see, we're going to get a little roll call. Those who get on early, get, get, get a roll call, get a roll call. My, my cousin David Robinson, hey buddy. Uh, Linda Cazera, okay, Greg's uh, Linda. Veronica Chase, oh, hey, welcome. Uh, y'all come on, y'all come. I see more people joining in. Okay, so welcome to... Uh, Monday night. So start at the watch party, share, like, and tell Lottie Dottie and everybody we are on. Okay, this has been quite a week. We've got a lot going on with our marriages and, and activity. So uh, I'm very proud to say today I officially uh, became the uh, chair of the National Speakers Association uh, Hall of Fame Leadership Council. And I'm the first African-American to hold that spot, so I'm very proud of that. Proud that uh, my buddy and my, my good friend, uh, Les Brown, uh, joined me as we celebrated this day. And he spoke at the, at the celebration, all via Zoom. And it was just a great event, so I'm very proud of that. And I even brought my sweetie pie on at the end, and everybody says she, she looks so cute. She does look cute, little little. Boop, boop, up here in that Thank top of the so and, uh, and so forth. All right, so let's get it on. Moses is here. We we can, we, we don't hey, we're not, not quite right without Moses. Not quite right. Donna Maria is here. So more and more folks can join and start a watch party, everybody, and like and let's share. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. We got you know you know we run out of time every week. Uh, thank you, Linda. It needs um, to be nice and tight. Nice and tight. So we're gonna get it going. Ready, baby? Let's rock and roll. Okay, so review from last week. Last week was how to keep your marriage fresh during this pandemic. And we had, we each had different yes, items. We had different things. Okay, so here was his quick roll call of what we said. Say thank you. Yes. Be grateful. Be Thank you, be grateful. I'm grateful for her. And I say thank you to her. I told her the other day, I said, I am really thankful you married me. Yeah, because my, my relatives really like her. My cousin June called, then I spoke Aww. to June, and June said, what a great wife you chose. I said, well, really, I chose to ask her. She didn't really want to do what I wanted her to do, but I finally just wore her down. So. <laughs> you convinced me. I'm glad you did. Yes, okay. And there's something about being grateful that, that helps with endorphins and everything else. And when you're grateful and you say thank you, you tend to lean into each other. Yes. Which brings up Sunday sermon. Yeah, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Go ahead. Uh, why can't we get to it now? It fits right here. All right. Okay? All right. Because Pastor uh, Jenkins and First Lady Trina celebrated their 40th wedding anniversary. Yeah. And they, they talked about three things that we actually cover yeah. in our book. Yep. For them, for 40 years that have kept them together. Yep. Not the only things, but there were three. There were it's three. godly to remember threes, right? Yep. And the first one they talked about was laughter. Learn to laugh together. And That's being right. friends. They, they said laughter, laugh yep. together, and that you're friends. A merry heart, a laughing heart does good like medicine. And then maintain your friendship. Don't fall out of friendship. You must have a strong friendship. People, you know, people can f fall in and out of love, but you don't fall in and out of friendship. And most people who are really good friends maintain it. We are good friends, and I still love her. I still love her. Okay, next is... And then repair the hurt and pain. If you're someone's hurt and pain, repair it. And don't let sex 
be the biggest and only attractive attraction item, but must have friendship at the foundation because sex, if that's all you get. Let's not go down the path talking about sex, please. Oh, Let's are not you, go down the path. See, she you wants to keep her brother from talking about the, no, no, the you get, sex. You, you know I want to get to the sex as often and okay, as quickly as possible. So point number two, number number one, laughter. So have fun together and be friends. Yes. And number two was First Lady talked about an A versus the eight. And I said, I had never really thought about that way. Yeah. But the A is when you hear and you're leaning into each other. That kind of gets to friendship. But the leaning into each other there was you're supporting each other and it points to God. So you got two yeah. you got two people who are two separate beings. But they come together, they lean in, and then it points to God. Now, here's the interesting thing. We had never heard that concept, but it goes right with our triangle. The mm -hmm. triangle in our book, in chapter number two, make God an equal part of your marriage, mm -hmm. 33, 33, 34. Mm -hmm. That God gets the majority portion of the marriage. He's the majority owner of the marriage. So we filter everything mm -hmm. through God. But I like that, the A, that, that, that both are coming together versus... The H. Pointing to God. H. And I had never heard of that. She's yeah. so smart. H. I had never heard of the that. The H is yeah. that this is you're, really. You're, you're both pointing. We both know God. about God, but we never come together about our relationship. Mm -hmm. And so we're two, we are two agenda items. Yes. And that's not how our marriage is. We are one agenda item. So the goal is to be like the A, which is to grow together, as opposed to the H. You're growing, but you're growing. But separate. you're growing apart. You're growing right. separately. Right. And you don't want that. No. And the no. last one was to value your spouse. Yeah. Is that right? Yep. Value That's... your spouse. So I was like, oh my God, this is so great. It fits right. Oh, it's but Ecclesiastes right right. 4 about the two. Two are better than one. And there's a good reward for the labor of your effort. That means marriage is a work. It is it is work. It's skill-based though, that you can learn the skill. And that's why we want you to come every Monday night. That's why we want you to get the book. If you don't have the book, you're missing an opportunity to grow your relationship. You're missing an opportunity. Get the book. Get two copies, one for you and one for your significant other. Go to jollymarriage.com and get the book. Get it autographed. You cannot, uh, you, uh, then marriage is intentional. And you commit to date time. And okay, time wait, wait. Other. We're focused on number one. Oh. Being grateful. Okay, okay well, that, that's what we're focused on. We're not trying to go through all of theirs. We're trying well, to I go want to get to the theirs. You know why? No, I don't know. Yeah, I don't let me tell you why. I got to no. tell you why. Because she don't want me to get to the sex part. No, get rid of them grandma get, clothes. No. Get rid of them. did say that. Get okay, rid of them. And you said it. Uh, uh, let me say, get rid of them grandma clothes. Wives coming to bed looking like Grandma Moses down to your to your feet. That ain't that ain't hooking. That ain't, that's not good for hooking a brother up. Honey, that's, I think we already mentioned. That I know thing. we didn't. No, we didn't. We didn't talk about that enough. We, last week. we got to talk about it more. The brothers. How many brothers want me to talk about the sex? Come on, somebody. We mm. got to talk about it. Talk about it. Anyway, talk, back right. to number one. Says, all right. Be thankful. Say thank you to each other and be grateful for each other which causes you to lean in and helps to develop the intimacy. Number two was be kind to one another. Yes. You're kind to each other. You're kind to me. Yes, I am. Have a sense of humor, fine humor. I definitely had to Ooh, find humor she when had I married because I had none. Okay, the next one was fix, fix issues before you're going to bed, before you go to bed. So don't go to bed angry, right? Right. Kiss more. Right. And then surprise one another. I think that's where we ended. Surprise one another. Yeah. And you can do something. It doesn't have to cost any money. Wash each other's car or take your car, take the, your, your spouse's car and have it washed. Do a chore that your spouse is supposed to do. Like, sometimes I empty the trash upstairs and we have trash night. Certainly do. I, 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 I take I out the trash and I beat, beat him to it. She beat me to it. She'll have it all together and I take it out. Um... Uh, thank you, Felicia, for saying so yeah. many beautiful things about my bride. I said you look cute and fly. Oh, thank you. Yeah, she is beautiful <laughs> and fly. Okay, and so um, put a note, special note on your partner's wallet, mm -hmm. card, gym now, bag, purse, for, for work bag, who, diaper bag. Who have children, and our children are grown now. But if you, for those who have kids, you say, well, what can I do? Well, maybe you can take the kids out early so that your that your spouse can sleep late. Mm -hmm. That that would work. Mm -hmm. 
Now, we don't have children here no special. more. So but she did let me so sleep your, late. Your, your partner can have more time alone. Saturday morning, I slept in. I went yes. in. Yes. I was so tired. Because usually this time of year, we're on vacation. And I take a, we take a week. We take a couple weeks off in August. One week in Outer Banks, North Carolina. And one week in Martha's Vineyard. And doing I go to Outer Banks, the first two and a half, three days, I am like hibernating. I'm just out. I just sleep for three days straight. I'm up and out at five. five and I'm just. Morning, anyway. And so we haven't gotten that in this year due to COVID. And so uh, I was tired. I'm still tired. So I'm. He's mentally tired. Yeah, so I got a lot going on. He I got requires a lot, going... a lot more sleep than I require. Okay. So. All right. So that that was it. That was it. So it was. Um, topic was how to keep your marriage fresh during the pandemic. Well, so we that keep was six our... reasons, and we have more. But now we're going to switch gears, and let's go to your question of the day. Okay, she Can wants she wants to get to this question. She wanted to start with it. I said, no, we got at least. So we know we 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 debate. Don't think that this all comes like without us having some dialogue that it's just flipping. We disagree, but we're we're we not disagreeable. It. No, we don't disagree. We don't argue. So we're working on coming together. We have to come to some agreement. I was reading something, and it said, you know what? You don't always have to agree, but once you once a decision is made, you have to be all in. You must be committed. We do that. Okay. Whatever way we are, so, once so we, we make a decision, we all agree on all the details. But once the decision come together is made, and then we're committed. We all in on if it's it. her way or my way, we all in. Or we try to blend it, but then we're committed to that decision to make it work. Okay. That's right. So the question of the day: We are a blended family. Okay. He brought two teenage daughters, and I have a son and a daughter. Mm -hmm. His girls come on the weekends mm -hmm. and never clean up after themselves. Mm. We agreed that those were the rules of the house, mm -hmm. but he doesn't enforce them, and I'm the bad guy. I hate it when they come. What should I do? You first. Because we're a blended family. So let's give you a little, D's next book, and I put it on more on her because she's writing. He has a, no clue. Because, uh, <laughs> I, I, well, I had to learn how to, I didn't have a blended. Well, you're not, you're not a, a step parent, so no, you I don't didn't. have a, I did not a have to be the step, no. and but I did have to be. We, a I, natural parent of a blender, which is painful. Let me tell you something. I had a conversation with a good friend of mine today, mm. who not today, this week, who is in the midst of this situation right now. He, his wife, and his daughter—that's not her daughter. Her, his, his daughter, his, his older daughter, came to live with him and his wife. Mm. He's remarried to this wife, and. They have no children together. And the older daughter came to live with him because she's had a lot of issues. And she and the wife don't get along. And I said, I'm praying for you. I've been there where it's some tension between your daughter, who you love, and your wife, who you love, and they're not loving each other. There's tension. So I, I told him what to do. I said, here's what, what, you I, tell what you do? I said, pray for wisdom. Oh, wow. That's what I told him to do. Just like when when we had the trauma, drama with my daughter, who I brought to the marriage, and D, and we had one together between the two of us. So we got a little baby boy. We got this daughter who's 10 years older, and it was drama city. And I didn't know what to do. I did not know what to do. I went to my mother. I went to my mother. Now my mother had never had blended family. My father had no children. When they got married, and they together, they had the two of us. But here's what I, I said, Mama, what should I do? She said, let me tell you, I don't know. But I tell you what I do when I don't know what to do. I pray. Come on, somebody. woo I pray. You know, Mama taught me you, to you, pray. You, you know you, you're off track. I've been ready to preach yeah. up in here. You better pray. Pray. Honey. I get fired Honey. up about the prayer. The prayers of you the did, righteous. You did not answer the question. Oh, okay. Okay. So, what are you going to do? And then the I'm going to tell you. The question was we agreed that those were the rules of the house, but he doesn't enforce them, and I'm the bad guy. I hate it when they come over. What should I do? All right. What do you think they should do? And I'm going to tell you the answer once you tell me what you think. you going to tell me the answer? I got the answer. For you. I got the answer. Here's the answer for me get a housekeeper because <laughs> here has to be part of the backstory of what of what i went through 
you come from different cultures. And I immediately thought about how I felt as I watched you suffer through when Latoya and I would disagree. And I felt bad for you. And you had to grow into being a disciplinarian instead of just a good time with dad. Right. So I don't care what I said, it was wrong. Right. So I had to learn to simply not say it. Right. Because I was not this child's parent. Right. Okay. So you say. Oh, wait, I'm not done. Oh. Okay. So I was not this child. I was not, I was not her parent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even though we had been friends before we got married. All you right. you talk about we you we, and her we, Latoya and I were friends before we got married right but everything changed as soon as we uh, as soon as we said I do right the moment we said I do right so we didn't I, I didn't understand the backstory of her feeling abandoned now dad's married now he doesn't care about me I didn't get any of that but I did have enough enough wisdom from my mom to say you know what he has got to learn how to handle this. And I'm not helping my relationship with my husband about complaining about his daughter. And so there has to be somewhere in there that he was feeling bad, that she was disruptive. Why was she disruptive? And why couldn't he handle her disruption? So I said, I have to remove myself from this because I still want to influence and communicate effectively with him. And being argumentative with his daughter was something that wasn't helping our situation and I want to be close to him so I had to learn to zip it to not complain and okay. that's why I said you know what I could get a housekeeper and that, that's being a little you know a little um, flippant but with my children and then his children only come on the weekends he must feel bad about so I would explain to my kids, look, this is what's going on. Your stepdad probably feels really bad that his kids can only come on the weekend. So he's going to be a little, he's going to be more lenient. Right. So I would explain to them two different sets of rules and, and, and stepdad will learn how to grow into this situation because we're all growing. All that right. would be my answer. All right. Her. So uh, Terrence, I'm going to answer Terrence's response first. So oh, I'll give I you what, what he said, said. Let the biological parent lead the non biological parent. Be humble. They are adults. Be responsible. The children are immature and they need direction. It's not that complicated, except when the, bi when the biological parent does not want to lead. Right. That's the problem in this situation. The biological parent says, I just let them run because crazy. They, because you feel bad. Because, I'm saying we so let's go bad. back to my same friend. He and his wife broke up it was very painful for the kids and so he let them get away because he did he, there was some tension in the in the breakup and he did not want to uh force that tension into the new relationship so he let them get away with stuff that you know same deal she won't clean up the room and the, <laughs> the, the, the stepmom and, and, and he feels guilty he feels guilty so he here's what i say guilty. though here's what i say Goes back to chapter number four. Communicate. Talk to each other. Communicate throughout the family. One of the things we learned, or I learned through that process of dealing with Latoya, dealing with the, the challenge of D, I prayed about it, and then I was proactive enough to say, let's talk. Let's have a now. I didn't know then what I know now about the four F's because the four F's are really, if anything God has ever given me that was wise, I know it was these four F's that are in this book. The four F's for difficult conversations. Everybody in any kind of relationship at some point in time is going to have to have a difficult conversation. And that difficult conversation might be at work, might be at home, might be among relatives. You have to have those critical conversations. And if you don't have them, it does not make it better by not having them. So, four Fs. Be friendly. Start off this conversation friendly. Never be mean, mad, angry, because then you people put up defense mechanism. Be friendly. Be frank. Now, you need to be frank. Frank means not you did this or you did that. No. 
This is how that makes me feel. This is how that, that and that could be a, a conversation even with the two daughters. This is how it makes me feel when I, I try and make everything right for y'all. I try and make everything. And what do you say? I don't care. That, well, but be friendly, <laughs> be frank, be fair, and say, now tell us your side, your perspective. Maybe there's something there. Why you do that? I'll I, I give you an example about being fair and listening. And that's about the listening and being patient in your conversation, being open. Today I spoke for a school system for their uh, start of the year program. Staff development. Staff development in service is what they call it, but staff development. And I did it virtually. And any of y'all want me to speak for your group virtually, reach out to me. We're speaking to a lot of groups all over the world. But I shared with them the story of Ryan Speedo Green. Ryan Speedo Green was today. Well, let me start where he is today. Is the number one bass baritone male opera singer in the world, African American. He sings with the Metropolitan Opera and with the Vienna Opera, uh, and he is the number one. Well, he was a juvenile delinquent. He was an angry young man. His father left. His mother was abusive. At 12 years old, he had a rap sheet. At 13 years old, he was sent to juvie. At 14 years old, he was trying to get put, be put back in a class in a detention school, and he threw a, a desk at the, the teacher. Oh. Most teachers would have put him out. This one little five foot one teacher said, "Okay, I'm not going to send you to the to this principal." You just won't have a desk. <laughs> Sit there without a desk. And he, she said he finally came to, to be calmed down. And then he, he went home, and they were doing well. Then he went home and had this big argument with his mother one night, and he threatened to kill her. Then the mother called the police. They sent him to a faraway juvie place, and he was in the juvie place. He was shackled and all of this and in detention. He was angry. And one day the, the guard came and said, you got a phone call. Who would be calling me? It was this teacher. She said, you're better than this. You're better than this and do not let this define you. God's got his hand on you. You're supposed to do great. I believe in you. I believe in you. And he said it, that conversation changed his life. And he said he, he got through that juvie detention, went back, she supported him. And he realized she, he didn't, she didn't just do it for him. She did it for everybody. And he said it changed his life, and he went on to become a choral student in the school. They, somebody went to the opera, took him to the opera. He fell in love with opera, and today he's the number one, he said. And he's just as easygoing, he said, that teacher. I'm saying that to say, listening to, that's the third point, be friendly, be frank, be fair. That let me hear what, what, why, you, why you're not cleaning up. Let me tell you why it's good to clean up. Or well, give them some reason. This is a conversation. Then be friendly, be fair, frank, be fair, then focused on a positive win-win relationship. I want you to win, daughters. We all want big happy family. I love you. Hopefully you love us. We I can, want you to spend time with I want your dad. dad, your time with your dad. And I just want you to ask you to will you clean up. Now if, if, if my wife can influence me of all people to clean up and make up my can, bed. Can I tell the conversation? You can have the conversation because nobody will believe what we, the conversation we had yesterday. Go ahead, give it to them. Go ahead. We had such interesting conversations. And since COVID, we have not had a housekeeper. Right. So I've saved money on that end. Yes. But I have become the overall housekeeper. Yes. And so I changed the linen. Well, in essence, we changed the linen. Yeah. So I encourage him to help me change the linen. And so we were putting the linen on the bed, and I said, how often did you change your sheets when you were growing up, really? Did you change your sheets every week, or did you change them every other week? And your answer was? I changed them when they got greasy and oily. <laughs> Oh my God! You actually said that. I said he went there early. I, I could slide out the bed when I, I slide in, slide out. I mean, oh, I'm so and embarrassed. She, and she said, "Didn't you make up your bed every night?" I said, and he never every morning made. I said, "Wake up, up your bed. bed for what? I mean, I'm getting back in it tonight. It'll be fine." 
his oh. mother was such a sweet, easygoing lady. I, I just, I just him <laughs> even saying that makes me cringe. <laughs> he never made up his bed. So <laughs> it shows you the tremendous influence that I have had so, over him. Oh, tremendous! I make up the bed every morning. I, make I get it up, out. Get I get out before he does. The little pillows, all oh, just arranged, and I make all the little pillows. He does. Lord have he mercy. Tucked the corners in. Can you believe that? You know that's nothing but <laughs> that's the power of sex. <laughs> sex. It does it every time. <laughs> You're supposed to say love. Oh, love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So, so, so uh, conversation. So I learned something new about you. We've been together for what, 40 years? Yes. You know, that that's amazing. Talking about just... All right, we got to get a dose of D. We got uh, three minutes, two, two, three oh, minutes. Oh, no. We didn't get to the second half. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so dose of D, we'll do next. We want to finish this. All right, go ahead. How do you keep your marriage fresh during the pandemic? We had the other things. Compliment each other. Compliment. I talk about... I tell that like goes you. like... I it's tell not her... the same thing as, as saying thank you, but to compliment... I tell her she looked good. I said, baby, you look good. You're cute as you can be. He's a great provider. He works really hard. And I remind him of that, that he does. And that I appreciate the fact that he works really hard. Dress up. We dress up for each other. You dress up. Every day she comes to the office looking like this. I mean, this is not. This I have a different yoga gear on, but she it's has, basically she yoga coordinated gear. coordinated every single day. She dresses up to come to the office. And you say something pleasant. And nobody like but that. us. It's yeah. only two of us. Yeah. Our staff is all working remotely. Just two of us. Okay, go ahead. Okay, plan dinner by candlelight. Every now and then we do that. We do that because it's all raw yeah. vegetables and the like. <laughs> sometimes we cook, sometimes we have tuna. Anyway, okay. Schedule sex. How about that? For a room other than the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> you like that one <laughs> okay pretend you just met what would your pickup line be <laughs> no that's not even so hey, you look so beautiful <laughs> Madam no what would your pickup line be pretend we just met we just met. what was your what was your pickup line if we just met let's say uh what was your pickup line? I don't know. I didn't have a set pickup. I'd make them up as I go. I was a creative guy. I don't know. I can think of something. But tonight I said, that little bun on the top of your head sure is shoot, ma'am. Well, how did you do that? I guess that is a beautiful bun. You know you're making fun. <laughs> be patient. Okay, we're patient with each other. Mm -hmm. And be honest when you mess up. Ooh. Even if you're embarrassed. Yeah, they, and I we got the perfect one in the book about me being late for the airplane, which she told me to leave on time. I said, I got this. I travel all the time, and I missed the flight, and I messed up. She stood there. She didn't say a word, and I said, I messed up. We got a now where we had a one-hour flight to get to the place where I got to be in the morning for my program. Now we gotta wait, we gotta go to Philly, do a three hour layover. It's gonna take us a one hour flight becomes an eight, almost a seven hour flight. Seven hour ordeal. Go to Philly, do a layover to Philly to, to somewhere else and somewhere. That's the only way we could get there. She didn't say a word. We were together. And we were he, together. I knew he already felt bad. So there was no need in, in, in me saying everything. Right. Anything. Right. It was better to say absolutely nothing. Right? Yep. Right. So homework. First week we said hold hands. Yep. Every day. Yeah. Last week we said said thank you each day for one small something that your spouse has done. Yeah. And this week we're gonna say kiss. Kiss. I thought and we said several kiss. times a day. But you said kiss at least three. Oh, that was that. That's not last week. Okay. Mm -mm. Ooh. Kiss at least three times a day. Ooh, I can do okay. that. Okay. Time mm -hmm. is up. Our time is up. Oh, look, go to jollymarriage.com. Get the book. We want no. Nobody bought a book last week. Uh, well, we need some new people. Do, just oh no, no, huh? no. We had one more order, so we gotta get more orders. We want y'all to go get two books. And let, if you don't have, share the information, if you have the people. book, I want y'all to send me a message. I got the book, but if you don't have the book, order it. Go to jollymarriage.com and get two copies. If you're single, get two copies too. All right, we gotta go. 
you I know y'all I thank y'all for saying you want more of this we're working on how we can create a TV show as well as more options and a, a seminar for y'all to join us for a whole experience but right now half out we got to go jolly out jolly out love y'all god bless see ya